and uh, one of the big things that you're seeing trending in the space is the, the addition of um, new media, right? So it's not um, the traditional viewing experience on a TV anymore. It's becoming a merge between that and um, more of the media center consumption experience, what people are calling smart TV, uh -huh. right? So um, as you can see from here, um, this is, I've just loaded uh, Windows Media Center. And, oops, and, um, what I've done is I've actually gone ahead and you can just see the sheer amount of content that people have to deal with today. Uh -huh. um, so you can imagine hundreds of channels dealing with music, videos, all sorts of things. Um, so that old model of going right, you know, right, right, up, down, left, mm -hmm. is just not going to work uh -huh. um, to be able to easily get to all the different types of content that you yeah. want to get in the space, right? Um, so when well, you actually- touch surface on top of the remote there. Huh? So, right, yeah. this is a full up stool. It actually has a, um, our touch technology in it. So uh, so this is actually a touch pad underneath uh, the Philips Dual, which allows you to go anywhere on the screen. Um, in fact, you can actually see this uh, in the Philips booth as well. They actually have the showing. Um, Although this is this is an older remote, but there you'll see other things as well. Uh -huh. uh, one of the great things about this is, of course, that not only can I get anywhere on the screen really, really quickly, uh -huh. um, I'm actually also able to support gestures. Now I don't have a scroll bar here, so I, uh, I'm not going to show that to you. But imagine, um, just like on the laptop, if I scroll down with two fingers, I can actually quickly run through all the hundreds of channels that I have immediately. Uh -huh. So this is what we're um, when we look at this. This is actually the way we see um, navigation happening um, currently and in the future um, as you deal with more of these media boxes. So here's an example of another um, production device that's out in Japan now. This actually runs a Panasonic Blu-ray player. Um, so again, if you stop by the Panasonic booth, you're going to see um, our touchpad products and some of their other remotes. So I actually encourage you to come by and uh, film some of those. But it's a similar idea. It's that, that you can navigate anywhere on the screen, be able to go ahead and um, quickly touch down and get to the media you want. Just because um, if you take a look, we just have so much content to deal with. So you've got other reference platforms here? For we do. We have two. Controls. Yes, we have two different reference platforms we're showing here. Mm -hmm. um, one is by a company called Freescale. As you can see, it's got the Synaptics touchpad in there as um, as part of the development kit. And um, this this came out a, a bit ago, and it supports the um, the RF4CE standard. Mm -hmm. So there's actually um, being able to go ahead and navigate. This is uh, this is not connected up, but being able to go ahead and navigate quickly on this touchpad um, is done not just through the fact that you have a touchpad, but um, we've done a lot of work to make sure that you know you can do certain functionality in the touchpad, like on board, left, right. So not so think of this not as just a way of navigating, but also being able to do some of the shortcuts that you got used to on your regular touchpad, the gesturing shortcuts, just like the the scrolling or shortcuts to go, you know, perhaps to jump to different parts of the menu. Mm -hmm. um, fast forward, that sort of thing. And I guess we've got some uh, com personal computers over here. Yeah. Um, let me just show okay. you this last one. This one okay. actually just came out in November of last year. Uh -huh. This is um, this is also a, um, a remote control of development kit. It's done by a company called Nordic. Mm -hmm. um, again, it has the Synaptics touchpad in there as well, so you can see that you know this is actually running um, just over Bluetooth. Uh -huh. So um, you know, very. This is a very low power mm -hmm. design. So it's a slightly different standard. Uh -huh. cool. But yeah. Uh -huh. Let's go over into this. Um, this is this area is where we're focusing on what's happening in the PC market in 2012. Uh -huh. um, so there's two big trends that we see happening in uh -huh. um, 2012. One is ultrabooks, so and you probably uh -huh. have seen a lot of those um, at CES. Um, uh -huh. And we're just showing you some of the first ultrabooks that shipped at uh -huh. the end of last year. Uh -huh. um, okay. So all of these have synaptics touchpads in them. Uh -huh. And ultrabooks are, of course, defined by a specification of in, by Intel, but their, their primary characteristics are their um, sleek, thin, and light form factor, the long battery life, and the fast startup time. Um, one of the things that you see happening um, with ultrabooks is that in order to fit into the sleek design, you'll see that um, touchpads are moving more away from this traditional touchpad with physical buttons yeah. into the click pad design. Uh -huh. Click pad design allows you to fit um, into the palm rest, uh, uh -huh. gives you a larger gesture area, uh -huh. and so it allows for better gesturing, um, more multi-finger support um, in a very um, sleek design. The other thing that's actually happening in 2012 uh -huh. is, um, towards the end, is um, what people are anticipating is the release of Windows 8. Mm, Metro um, here, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this is actually a developer build um, of Windows 8. Um, you're able to go to the Microsoft website today and just download um, uh -huh. an early version of it. Um, 
but uh, what you can see here is we're showing you a concept. Mm -hmm. um, so Windows 8 is a touch-first operating system, mm -hmm. and as such, um, it, it revolves around using touch as a navigation model, mm -hmm. and also, um, as you can see, it has a very fast and fluid UI. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when, um, there's it two looks like it's a little bit larger on the the size of the touchpad, I guess. It, it does. So if you um, if you look at our touchpads here, um, this is actually a standard, um, you know, Samsung series line that's out there today. Um, but what we've done is we've um, we've uh, retrofitted the touchpad mm -hmm. in there. Um, with a different one of our touchpads. It actually comes with our touchpad, but um, and it comes in with our click pad. And the click pad here actually demonstrates what we think of as the ideal hardware, or you know, more of an optimal hardware recipe for creating a great um, Windows 8 experience on touch. And the things that you see here are, um, First, that it's a click pad, just like in Ultrabooks, it gives you the larger gesture area. Uh -huh. uh, Microsoft has really kind of set the bar for what um, what should be the um, the gesture area to fit your whole hand. And for Windows 8, they're actually recommending a 4.9 inch diagonal, which is actually slightly larger even uh -huh. than what's on this. It's, uh -huh. it's the same as on that, that machine over there. Uh -huh. uh, the second thing is, of course, that with Windows 8, you want to be able to support, um, you know, five finger. Um, applications yeah. or multi-finger applications, mm -hmm. and so um, the uh, the other thing you, um, you need in this recipe is you need to move um, to image sensing technology. So um, profile sensing technology is an older technology that we also have, mm -hmm. and what that does is it supports one and a half finger. So you see mm -hmm. um, something like that more here. You can see that um, you're just doing one finger, mm -hmm. but um, but with I'm oh, sorry, um, but with um, image Five fingers or yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, but yeah, with image sensing technology, what you get is you get full five finger tracking. So just like mm -hmm. we saw in the paint app, you actually have five fingers of data that we're passing over, so you can tell where every single finger is individually. Mm -hmm. um, now, once you have all that finger data, mm. um, the new thing you need is you need a high, sp um, high speed, high bandwidth connection, right? So you need to be able to send all of that finger data mm -hmm. back to the PC. Uh -huh. And that's actually where our InterTouch product comes into play. Mm -hmm. uh, InterTouch is a product we announced last year. And what that really does is it allows you to work um, with all the additional finger data and pass it back to um, back to the operating system and, go, and you're just able to interpret all that additional finger data. Mm -hmm. So that gives you better um, Better finger, oh, sorry, better multi-gesture support mm -hmm. overall. Um, so, so really, like when I when I look at all this, the magic formula is if you want to have an optimal experience where you're able to take advantage of the fact that you've got um, all these great touch applications and just make it a very natural, intuitive way to um, to move through um, something like um, a multi-gesture interface like Windows 8. Um, what you can do is you, you want to go with a 4.9 inch diagonal click pad to give you that larger surface area, um, image sensing technology so that you can track all five of your fingers, and um, an inner touch so that you can report all of that finger data to your, to your operating system. Great. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs>